What's up, guys? I'm Shreya Sada, and I have my guy, Carter Stanley, and we're here with another episode of Rock Chalk Film Room. We're talking all things how Kansas beats K-State. But if we want to backtrack a little bit, Kansas loses a tough one to Texas Tech last week. Uh, you know, they have Jason Bean get hurt in really the end of that first quarter with head injury. Uh, third string freshman walk on Cole Ballard comes out and he's just gunslinging from really feels like the first snap. He's not afraid. I felt like I've never been more impressed with a freshman third string walk on in my life at quarterback because he played with no fear. He's going out there, bulldozing and guys on and runs. He's throwing it deep. His, his stat line was, you know, pretty okay. It was 9-20, 143 yards, one pick with, you know, the pick obviously getting deflected. But there were some big drops by KU, uh, and he basically brought them back from down 13-0 in the fourth quarter with the help of Devin Neal. What do you think, Carter? Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was obviously not the final result we wanted. Um, you know, tough when your quarterback goes down, and like you said, you, you got a – initial third string true freshman walk on and having uh, obviously he went into this week and in several weeks prior knowing that he is the next guy you know to go in if Jason Bean gets hurt but it just it, it is really completely different going into a week where you know you are going to be the starter compared to just thrown in get thrown in mid game so uh I was very impressed with Cole you know I thought he was very poised um had some gutsy runs. He's he's a bigger kid than yeah. You know, I, I thought. Yeah, I I guess he's two twenty five, six two, two twenty five. Like that's that in itself is pretty impressive for you know true freshman. Um, so no, I, it definitely felt like the team kind of rallied around him too because you know obviously they realized they're two quarterbacks down at that point and and you got an inexperienced freshman so. I feel like when you get situations like that, you're going to naturally kind of have like the rest of the guys on the team kind of step up in their game and and understand the uh, the circumstances there. So I was really impressed with him and, you know, definitely looking forward to uh, seeing him maybe, maybe play this weekend. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny because I remember Jalen Daniels told me early in the year sometime that Cole Ballard is a baller and he's very good. And, you know, you take it with a grain of salt because, you know, you think these guys are just supporting their teammates, but – we saw it firsthand on Saturday, and I think this play illustrates how much his teammates really rally around a guy. I mean, like, like you watch this, he, they snap the ball, he takes it, he takes it himself, and he gets some tough yards. Look at him lowering his shoulder a little bit. He gets the first down. He has a little emotion right there. I mean, like, how much and how exciting is something like that? You have a, a – a, a third string freshman walking who does not care about his body whatsoever. And these two guys are just getting bulldozed right there. And I think there are some KU fans that saw some comparisons between Cole Ballard and your play back in the day. Do you agree, disagree? What do you think? Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's, that's awesome. And, you know, I was, it's funny. I was watching the game with my parents this past weekend and my dad kind of said something similar, which was uh, <laughs> funny and, no, I, I love seeing him go out there and, <clears throat> you know, just fearless because obviously true freshman before this moment, he, I'm sure his teammates have never seen him in a live situation because, you know, he, he hadn't had any game experience. And um, obviously the quarterbacks, they're, they're not live in practice. So to see what he actually does in a live moment like that, it was it was awesome to see. And, uh, you know, obviously the power is there. I you know, he had that play where he knocked the guy's helmet off, you know, I think in the third or fourth quarter, that was, that was awesome to see. So definitely like what I see out of him. And, uh, you know, I think he's definitely got a bright future. Do you feel like, I mean, as a guy that has had a lot of, you know, kind of bone shattering runs, it feels like how big of a momentum shift is that and like rejuvenates your teammates in a game like this where it's so close? Yeah, no, definitely a lot of components to it. You know, I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, if, if your teammates see you kind of laying your your body on the line like that, they're they're going to see that and be like, all right, you know, this is what he's doing. I got to give it my all, you know, whether that's on a block, on a tackle, on a run, you know, you name it. But mm -hmm. if they see that passion and, and that emotion out of you, I, I think that definitely elevates just the uh, the intensity of your teammates and, and how much they care and, um, 
yeah, it's uh, game one for Cole Ballard. It was it was definitely awesome to see that. One hundred percent. And you know, the next play, we've talked so much uh, just about how good Kansas is run game, <clears throat> and we know it's a setup to what the passing game can offer. And so late, late era in the game, early in the fourth quarter, you know, they're down 13 zero. It felt like the run game hadn't been able to do anything all game. Devin Neal gets loose with a little stutter step in there and he takes it to the house. Right. And I think before that he was struggling to get maybe three, three and a half yards per carry. And he ended the night on like 7.1 yards per carry. Cause I think this nice run definitely added to it. But I mean, it, illustrates the point that this Kansas team, even if they're having stack boxes, even if they're having teams go out there and challenge them in the run game, that they just have to keep going with it because it takes away the pressure from any quarterback, whether it's Jason Bean or Cole Ballard, because we don't know who's going to be out there quite yet. And, you know, I think it illustrates the point that eventually defenses will get tired later in the game. Like it seemed like the Texas Tech defense did uh, the later and later it went in the game. And Hysha especially is a bruising back who can be a little bit of a battering ram, I think, throughout the game. That'll open up some holes for Devin, who's so shifty and quick and and kind of just burst into the scene. Yeah, definitely. I, th- I think, you know, it's going to be huge. Like you said, it's, it's a big time component for KU <clears throat> every single game, no matter who's at quarterback, just to establish the run. But I'd say this game – with the potential quarterback situation more so than any game we've seen. So, you know, I think, uh, I don't think you have to run it every single play. You still want to have those plays where you're getting Cole Ballard, some simple quick passes, get him in a rhythm to kind of gain that confidence as the game goes on. But, you know, if, if you could persistently pound the rock and, and just keep going, despite maybe, you know, if you're only getting held to three yards of carry or something, if you keep going, towards the end of the game, there's, there's going to be opportunities where, you know, a run like this pops for a big one. Yeah. And I mean, kind of just building off of that, I think you mentioned a really cool stat where if <clears throat> Kansas state is behind in the first quarter, uh, they've been 0 and three on the year. So Kansas, we've talked about fast starts all year and Kansas, especially if you can really kind of put the pressure on Kansas state, in a, you know, they're playing in Lawrence, not at home. I think that's tremendous for, uh, you know, KU because you want to give whoever's back there, whether it's Jason Bean or it's Cole Ballard, as much cushion as possible to be comfortable and play their game. If you're out up there, you know, it's first quarter ends, and they're up 10-0. I think that's a win, a big, big win, and a really big step in the right direction for Kansas to get their first win in a Sunflower Showdown in the last, well, since 2008. <laughs> No, absolutely. That's a that's a great point. I think it was 10-0 Texas, K-State, 10-0 Texas Tech, K-State, and then 10-7 <clears throat> Missouri, K-State. So that's going to be a huge thing. And then once you do have that lead, that's when you could be more inclined to even rely on the run game and, and establish that run game. So I think, again, it's going to be huge to uh, get off to a good start. So on the other side of the ball, it's – you know, kind of same thing here. It's have to get off to a good start because on the other side, I think when K-State, when they have the lead, they, I don't think they've lost or they haven't lost yet when they have the lead after the first quarter. And there's a lot of games, especially recently, where they'll just jump ahead of teams, whether it's 10-point lead, 14-point lead, you know, you name it in the first quarter. And that's when they get comfortable because then they could just run the clock out and that's their MO. That's what they want to do. So this is, uh, I, you know, I think the keys for KU's defense, especially early on, just bring a lot of pressure, whether that's stacking the box and bringing linebacker blitzes or just having guys close to the line of scrimmage. But you want to, number one, stop the run because that's what, I, whether it's Bill Snyder or Coach Kleiman, they, they've always wanted to run the ball, you know. So I think where you look at games where they haven't been able to successfully run, that's the game that they either lose or, you know, definitely struggle offensively. So, you know, once you kind of slow down that run and if you start off on a you know fast note on offense, they're going to have to start throwing the ball. And once you get plays like this, this is uh, – just a good example of bringing a delayed blitz, 
forcing Will Howard to make a play. It's third and 10 here. We'll see a different angle, but they're going to show a lot of pressure on the left side here. And what you're going to get is number eight right there, just circled, bring a delayed blitz, force him to throw off his back foot, just not an accurate pass there. And, you know, just say uh, something I think KU should definitely implement on, on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, we've seen Will Howard throughout this year have games where he's thrown multiple interceptions. I mean, like we saw in the OSU game, I think he had three picks. It's not like he's not prone to making mistakes when pressure is given, right? And Kansas does a really good job, I think, of taking advantage of these picks and turning them into touchdowns. I mean, they leave, I think we might still be leading or top 10 in uh, you know defensive touchdowns. I'm not expecting them to take to the house, but it, it completely shifts. Wouldn't mind it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 100%. 100%. But, I mean, like, it completely shifts the momentum of the game when you can get a guy like Will Howard in trouble a little bit and you're, you know, on a road environment for K-State. And, you know, whether the Wildcats will admit this or not, the gap has certainly gotten smaller and smaller, okay? And this K-State team is not as good, I think, as its record indicates because, I mean, to be quite frank with you, they haven't played a lot of starting quarterbacks in this conference, you know? (laughs) They've played a lot of backups, so, I mean, you know, they played great against Texas. I, I won't sit there and say they did it. But, you know, you put Will Howard in position to make mistakes and you stop that run game, that's probably as good of a key to success on the defensive side as you can get for KU. Yep. No, totally. And this is, uh, you know, kind of tying into what, what we've mentioned earlier, how first quarter, halfway through the first quarter, Oklahoma State's already up 7-0. And obviously – you know, offensively, you're not necessarily changing too much if, you know, the other team scores on the first drive. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's 7-0. They're, they're down. And, you know, this is uh, this is another example where just a little pressure, it's uh, just kind of forces some problems for them. So play action kind of boots out, you get late pressure, and there's just a safety that's right there in the middle. That's, this is a ball that – you know, Will, Will would say himself he should never have thrown that, but you get in hectic situations with pressure and you do things that you maybe normally wouldn't. So just another emphasis on, you know, I think it's going to be huge for KU to uh, cause some pressure because we got some great defensive backs. Um, I don't think K-State has too many good wide receivers, to be honest with you. I think 34, uh, Ben Sinnott, their tight end, he's a really good playmaker. That's mm-hmm. going to be the guy that Will Howard is going to want to uh, target in, in high pressure situations. So, you know, ideally if we could get Craig Young on him or, or Kenny Logan and, you know, just uh, get some tight coverage on him, then, you know, it's, it could cause some problems. Yeah. I think this is a game that I'm, I'm really fascinated with because it can go a lot of different ways. And I mean, you know, I really am intrigued to see, how big of a step this KU defense has made compared to last year when they lost by, you know, 20. And the <clears throat> offense is definitely, you know, going to have an interesting day, whether it's Cole Ballard or, or Jason Bean at quarterback right there, because, you know, I, I think this K-State team has as many as holes as you could have hoped for, for how good of a team it is. You know, like there are holes there. It's just on KU to kind of poke and prod a little bit. And, you know, if you get out to a fast start, you're at home, things change quickly in football. You know, like you're putting the pressure on K-State instead of the other way around. I think Lance talked about it. They lost 14 straight. They should play loose. They shouldn't be anxious. Right. You know, there's nothing but house money on the line for Kansas because you're playing potentially with a third or second string quarterback. And, you know, long shot odds for the Big 12 title anyways. You've lost 14 straight. You lose 15 straight. No one's going to say anything. Right. Kansas State losing fifteen, uh, losing on this game to second or third string, I think would be much worse than Kansas losing this game. Yep. Um, and, you know, K-State's favored by seven or eight. So it, it should be a fun one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Play loose, you know, kind of a similar approach to the Oklahoma game, obviously, or uh, honestly. Um, definitely just play loose, play within your system, especially if it's Cole Ballard, you know, you don't have to go out there and be, be Superman, just <laughs> play within the system, you know, count on your teammates, count on the coaching and, you know, just uh, take it play by play. A hundred percent. Appreciate you as always, Carter. Appreciate all you guys who watch, tune in and leave us comments. Uh, excited to see what happens Saturday and we will be there to talk about this next week. Thanks guys. Let's go.